looking. Want to come down in the basement and play cavemen? Want to stay up here and play astronauts? I just want to look. Look at what? Hey, it's a bird's nest. Don't talk so loud. you wake them up. There's no birds. There are just eggs. The birds are in the eggs, Dumbo. Yeah, but how do you know they're sleeping? All babies sleep most of the time. And besides, what else can they do in such tiny eggs? Not much, I guess. They can't even practice flying. Upset? <laughs> Why should I be upset? It's jolly fun to be wakened every morning at 5.30 by a sprinkler truck. <laughs> and, and this morning was positively festive. That ancient monster broke down right below my bedroom window. <laughs> oh, you're sorry. Well, while you're all choked up, how about doing something about that clanking dawn patrol in the near future, like right now? A doctor will be with you in just a minute, Mr. Allison. All right, I'll hold, but don't be all day. I've got a whole room full of patients here. I finished the preliminary. Oh, very good. Well, what? You don't have jurisdiction. I called the Department of Water and Power first because I thought it was the most logical. Of course, I should have known if it was logical, it had to be wrong. You're all a bunch of bureaucratic blockheads. Would you believe that is the eighth city department that I've tried today? And that is the eighth one to pass the buck. I know, Doctor. I couldn't help overhearing. Doctor, why don't you call that man you play golf with, um, uh, Fitzsimmons? Councilman Fitzsimmons. Baker, you just earned your week's salary. Ah, temperature normal, blood pressure okay, vision good, no aches, no pains. What's his problem? He can't sleep. Corey, out of here, Mom, on the balcony. What's going on? Look what we found, Mrs. Baker. I found before your old Jay Wagoner even came here. Okay, I found a second. Well, how about that? A bird's nest. What kind of birds are they going to be, Mrs. Baker? We'll have to wait until they hatch her, or until we see the mother bird. Where is she? Yeah, what kind of mother is that leaving four little babies all alone? Well, she's around somewhere. You can be sure of that. You just let somebody come near that nest, and she'll come swooping down to protect her eggs. When are the birds going to hatch? Well, if I remember my ornithology, I'd say that, um... I don't remember my ornithology. What's ornithology? That's the study of birds. I do know, though, that at the proper time, the mother will sit on her eggs and keep them warm while the little babies are growing. It must get awfully hot in here. Well, the mother bird has ways of kind of regulating the temperature. How? How? Oh, that's a good question, Corey. Uh, I'd say that uh, nature, nature takes care of it, right. But after they're hatched, the mother and father bird bring them worms to eat every morning. Gee, worms for breakfast? Birds like worms. Yes, and just like all babies, you know, they can't feed themselves. They have to be fed. So the mother takes the little worm and she pushes it down their little throats. Yeah. It's just like you used to do with my oatmeal. Oh, not quite, Corey. What does the father bird do? He flies around all day looking for more worms. It's just like he goes to work every day to support his family. Exactly. Well, I better get dinner started. Corey, how about ham and eggs for a change? Just ham, thank you. That's better than worms. Hi, beautiful. That's the password. 
Sorry I couldn't make it to dinner, but as I told you on the phone... I understand. A rising young lawyer has to put business first if he intends to keep rising. Would you mind very much if we skip the movie tonight? I'm so bushed. I'd just like to spend a nice, quiet evening here. Counselor, your motion is sustained. Well, how about this motion? Oh. <laughs> hey, Steve! We'll take this up after a short recess. Mm -hmm. Recess? That's for school. Hi, Corey. What's the torch for? You want to see my bird's nest? Your bird's nest? Yeah, it really belongs to the mother and father birds. I'm watching it while they're away. How do you like that? A bird babysitter. Okay, pal. Let's go see your nest. <laughs> Well, what do you know? Any idea what kind of birds they are? Not yet. We'll have to wait till they hatch, or till we see the mother bird. Well, you haven't seen her yet? No, but she's around someplace. You go near that nest, and she'll come swooping down to protect those eggs. <laughs> Sounds like a real devoted mother. When are the birds supposed to hatch? Well, if you remember your ornithology. Ornithology? Yeah, if that's the study of birds, do you remember it? Well, I'm afraid not. For a very simple reason, I never knew it. Then I'll tell you what happens. The mother sits on the eggs to keep them warm. You see, birds don't have baby blankets, and the mother doesn't want them to catch cold while they're growing. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Then after the babies are hatched, the mother bird feeds them worms. She's got to push them all the way down their throats. Otherwise, they get all over the floor of the nest. Well, that's interesting. Tell me, Corey, what does a father do while this is going on? Just hang around and pass out cigars to his friends? No, he's out looking for more worms for the babies. All right, Corey Baker, it's time for bed. I think Steve has had more than enough ornithology for one evening. Can't be more than enough. He didn't start with any. <laughs> That's true. But if I try to cram any more of it into my head right now, it'll pop. Come on, let's go. Well, off to bed. I'll come in later for my goodnight kiss. Okay, night, Steve. Good night, Corey, and uh, thanks for the free lecture. You better take my flashlight. What for? Somebody ought to look in on the nest every once in a while. Yeah, right. we Will do. Maybe I better kiss you now, Mom. You might get busy. All right. Good night. Well, he's growing up, that son of mine. Yeah, we men will do that every time. <laughs> he's really hung up on that nest. Yeah. Oh, may I assume that court has reconvened? Oh. Now what? May we bar June? We want to see the bird's nest. Hi, Steve. Earl's been telling us all about him. About Steve? No, the nest. Oh, the next tour of the Baker balcony will start immediately. <laughs> I could hardly get him off to school. The mother bird was sitting on the egg. Baker, I'm really not up to listening to a report of the Junior Audubon Society this morning. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure I'm up. Oh, that sprinkler truck? Uh, it broke down again this morning. If that thing was a horse, they'd shoot it. Did you speak to Councilman Fitzsimmons? He's all tied up in meetings. Oh, his secretary told me to send him a letter with all the particulars. Oh, well... Let's go. To the Honorable Councilman Fitzsimmons. Honorable? Ha! <laughs> the way he keeps scoring a golf course. Well, he is a councilman, and you do want a favor. Well, asking a politician for a favor is like praying to a stone idol. Clinic Baker. Oh, Corey, what is it? The babies have hatched. Really? Oh, the birds have hatched. Hooray. Yeah, and their mouths are wide open. They look like they're awful hungry, and their mother isn't around. She's probably looking for food for them. Suppose she doesn't come back soon. What should I do? Nothing at all. Uh, he wants to know what he should do. Hold them upside down, smack their pin feathers until they peep. 
thanks a lot. Corey, don't worry. The mother bird knows what to do. And besides, your mother is very busy, so I'll see you later, darling. Right, goodbye. Um, to the Honorable Joseph Fitzsimmons, City Hall. Yes. There is one, uh, no. N -n 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 no rusty hunk of... Look, Baker, I know exactly what I want to say about that confounded machine, but you'll have to stuff your ears while I'm dictating it. This is it, Charlie. And that must be the tree. Who's that guy? And what does he want with our tree? Pull up ahead, Charlie. Come on, we better get down there. Better go inside, boys, or you might get hurt. I better cut it down. Nothing we can do about it. You see, he's got this city work order. See? Uh. Thanks. Aren't you gonna arrest him, Dad? What for? For carrying a deadly weapon? No, he's just trying to do his job. Thanks. All right, if you'll step back now so he won't get hurt. We're staying right here. And if you want to add assault and battery to this other crime... work order should fall out of my pocket and the wind should blow it away, I can't cut you down without a work order. Normally, they would issue me a new work order tomorrow, but nothing ever happens normally in my department. So it'll take three days. And in three days, people might be able to have that order canceled and save that family up there. I'm still one up on you. Oh, but there must be some way to get to the right department. If you find out how, patent it. It'll be worth millions. Wait a minute. What about your friend, Councilman Fitzsimmons? Friend? That phony? Get his reply to my complaint about the sprinkling truck. Dear Chegley, in Ray, your suggestion about the sprinkler truck. May I suggest that if we started retiring everything that's old, where would you be? I didn't say a thing. <clears throat> However, since I try to be of assistance to any of my constituents who have a valid complaint, and since I consider being awakened every morning at 5.30 by a sprinkler truck a valid complaint, I'm enclosing what I trust will be a solution to your problem. Well, that's something. And here is the solution. A pair of earplugs. Corey. What? It's 
after midnight. I know, Mom, but I just can't sleep. Of course you can. Now you get right back into that bed and you start counting sheep or something. I tried that, but they kept turning into birds. And then I started to get worried. It said on TV tonight that it might rain. Well, it doesn't look like it. But even if it does rain, nature's provided birds with ways and means of protecting themselves against the weather. I wish nature could do something about saving that tree. First, she'd have to find the right city department. Maybe she could hire a private detective or a lawyer, maybe. Hey, Stan's a big famous lawyer, isn't he? Oh, right now, he's just a lawyer. But if he could save that tree, maybe that would make him big and famous. Corey Baker, that's a very fine idea. But what can I do? You've already tried seven departments and it hasn't done any good. That is why we need a lawyer. But I never had a bird for a client. Oh, well, you've got one now. But where's my case? Your case, my darling, a family is being evicted, thrown out of their house. Yeah, but that's not the way the law sees it. That's the way the birds see it. Oh, Steve, you just have to take this case. Okay, I'll take it, I'll take it. Now may I? <laughs> They're still eating good. Yeah, I wonder if they'd have such good appetites if they knew what was going to happen to their tree. Maybe it won't happen. Well, at least they have a lawyer now. Suppose the other side gets a lawyer, too. According to my mom, the other side doesn't even know who the other side is. <laughs> I spoke to my sergeant, and he was very sympathetic. They threatened to cut a tree down in front of his house last year. Uh, what happened? Well, last year they cut it down. Uh, Nothing he could do. I got an idea. When the tree chopper shows up, we'll tie ourselves to the tree. And, and... Oh, it was just an idea. He did it! He did it! Oh, Steve! You heard the boys. As a member in good standing of the Bar Association, I can assure you of an indefinite stay of execution for the tree. Oh, oh, oh frankly, Steve, I didn't think you could do it. And neither did I. <laughs> I got the same runaround you did until I thought of a simple solution. I just reversed the process. Huh? I raised so many silly questions, I got them running around after each other. It's just one of those things that happen with birds. As soon as they learn to fly, they leave the nest. As a matter of fact, it happens that way with all children. You'll leave this nest someday. Never. Mm, of course you will. You'll get married, and you and your wife will want a place of your own. Oh, no. She can leave her nest, but I'm staying right here. Well, it's a long time off, so we don't have to talk about it now. Why don't you come on inside? I know where there's a big piece of pie left from last night's dinner. Thanks, Mom. But I don't feel like eating. I don't feel like doing anything. I just want to stay out hey, here. Hey, Corey, guess what? What? You know that big gray cat of Mrs. Dorfmeyer's? Yeah. She's having kittens. Oh, boy, let's go. Oh. 